to your life. Hi guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. How you doing? Hi Brenda, Alice, Mary, Thelma, Mary R, Andrea, Patrice, Betty McSorley. Hello everybody. Hello, hello, hello. We are gonna have fun today. Can you skip the ads? Am I actually showing on there? I have ads I'm looking at. <laughs> Your stupid computer. There we go. I can see you. You can see me. I think we're good to go, huh? We see you. Okay, and you're hearing me okay? Should be. Okay, good deal. All right, let's see what we're going to make today. We are trying out this new camera view that you guys said you liked, so we're doing this. Here's our big card we're making today. Our story card. We're going to make this one. Yours and your kits will be a little less bright green. That was the feedback from my family. Go a little more vintagey in the color. So yours won't be quite so bright, the green. It'll be a little bit darker green. Not dark, dark, but a little bit darker. Hi, Daria. I missed your name. I have this one. I think we got the camera or the the light angles pretty good today too, so I think we won't get so much glare off the lights. There we go. We're gonna do this one. Oh good, your package came in. We're gonna do this one. It sure is easier to hold them up from this angle, I have to say that. And we're going to do this one. So we got seven cards in total. We're going to start with the with the little ones first, I think. And let's take a look at what's in your kit. Once again, I have my name on my kit in case I forget my name. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Bryce said that could happen, guys. Do you see the abuse I put up with? Do you see it? Everybody thinks Bryce is such a nice guy. Truth be known, he's a little ornery. <laughs> he's over here shaking his head. Not me. Not me. <laughs> this is a really rich kit, guys. I think if you get this one, you're really going to love it. We get in this kit, we get our Merry Christmas die with our neat, I love these, this little starburst and berry thing. That's cool. We get foam, a whole sheet of foam pads, get a little Merry Christmas sticker because in one place I thought this fit better than the, than the cutout die. We get this beautiful embossing folder. Now, I want to pay just a little bit of attention to this one. Even though this is, they're calling this tinsel lattice and it's marketed as a Christmas, there's absolutely no reason why this, this has to be a Christmas folder. I mean, I can see using this all year and it's a really, really pleasant pattern. So I think you're going to like that. You're going to get six cards with envelopes here. Somewhere in here, there should be a number seven. There's number seven and its envelope. I'll put my envelopes away for now. In addition, you are going to get several sheets of Mary 
three, I guess, three sheets of A6, Miri. You're going to get a working paper. You're going to get red and green cardstock. So see, it's not terrible green. It's just a, a darker shade. You're going to get two full sheets of black Mary, one sheet of a gold A4. You're going to get three sheets of punch-out images. See you in a bit, Daria. Okay, you get the kitties and the puppies. I'm not sure if it says on here what the names of these are. Don't know that we care. The kittens and the puppies. You get the storyboard with the tree. I think this one's called Christmas tree. And you get the puppy sheet. Let's start with this one. Let's see. In addition, you also get a 23-page paper pack of 6x6 six six double-sided papers, which is beautiful. And you get all of these wonderful images. And one thing I wanted to point out in this is that you have more cards yet to be completed by just fully utilizing this paper pack because in the back of this paper pack, and we'll get there eventually, like the one we did before, this has two color palettes on some of these images. And we'll get there. We just keep flipping. <laughs> I love this one. This would just be so cute to just put a bow on it. It's so cute. And I love it in the brown tones, too. Isn't that pretty? But in the back of our book here, we actually have some cutout images that are really nice. I started to make a card with this one, and then I decided that there was no, you know, I was just getting so many cards in our pack that I couldn't possibly complete everything if I kept going at my current pace. So I stopped. I stopped. Okay, so, or you could use the other side of the paper, but I think these images are really cute. And this paper's heavy enough that using those images separately would be great. Or you can use them all individually, or you can layer those images for additional layers. So this is a really good paper pack, too. All right, I kind of got a little bit carried away with the Mary, so we're not going to utilize as many of these today, although we actually are going to use this. So it would make me feel good if you made some extra cards using that paper pack, because there's really some great stuff in there. So here we go. Let's get started, shall we? We're going to use one of our A6 cards. Let's see, how can I organize this to keep myself... Keep myself somewhat organized here. Let's just take one of those out. And which one do we want to start with? Let's start with the Bentley dog, shall we? Let's start with Bentley. You guys are always... Uh, well, uh, every time we... The ad agency that runs my Facebook page, every time they publish a picture of Bentley, you guys say, who's that dog? Bentley is... Teddy's first friend. My friend Lisa has Bentley. Bentley is a sweetheart. He's clearly, he's a Yorkie. And when I first got Ted, Bentley and Teddy were comparably sized. Now Bentley is a little intimidated by Ted because Teddy towers over him. And of course, Teddy has the energy of five dogs. <laughs> so... Bentley isn't quite as convinced that Teddy's his bestie as he used to be. I'm going to get my embossing folder out here because we're going to use both the embossing folder and the dies right away. Put those aside. Okay. We're going to need our foam squares. we we'll keep this set of images out. We may not make all of these guys, but you'll have examples if we don't finish them. We're starting early, but we still... That's a lot of cards, and 
some of these are a little bit time consuming so we'll see what we end up doing in any case you will have the patterns to go by so if you choose to okay let's get our 3d images out and start layering that up now you'll remember that these ones from uh, find it trading are a little lighter weight than the ones with quite a bit lighter weight than the ones we use from hunky dory but they're still good they're good ones they just take a little bit more care because they're lighter weight sometimes with these sets i think i gave you um five by five by two squares but sometimes with these um, little lighter ones I will use a three millimeter square and if you like those we do have them available hi Jordan welcome babe how you doing <laughs> Mary says she's sending me a six-pack I presume of diet coke <laughs> by drone <laughs> oh. You still got snow, Jordan? <laughs> I love that she checks in too. It makes her seem not so far away. <laughs> of course, Diet Coke. <laughs> no snow, okay. Anybody else out there got snow today? I've heard from a couple of you that you had snow falling earlier. We've had snow. We have not had snow, but the Pacific Northwest had some snow in Spokane. What's four letter words? Diet Coke? Oh, I love Diet Coke. <laughs> It's 80 in Oklahoma. Oh my gosh. It's drizzly and very cold here, but not snow worthy. Excuse me, Bryce? 46. It's 46, he said. Oh, I lost my foam squares. They were right. No, the S word. Oh, snow! I got it. I got it. <laughs> I take it you don't like snow, Patrice. <laughs> oh, it's 88 in Florida today. Wow. Well, I like the cool rather than the hot. So even though it is drizzly and a little cool, I, that's fine with me. That's why I live in Oregon. <laughs> you develop web feed after a while here and then it's fine 60 look at this the temperatures are so strange you know that across the country we have totally different <laughs> spring to autumn and back again yeah yeah that's good i used to say we didn't really have a summer here or a winter here but weather's changing yes uh you have a sister in spokane yeah we do too bryce's sister paula lives in spokane so we kind of keep up on the spokane weather i lived in spokane once for two years i loved it i am really kind of a coastal girl at heart but if I had to live somewhere else, I would pick Spokane because it's really beautiful and friendly and it's interesting. It's only a little ways, well, it's, it's a state away, but it's not all that far over there, but it's like a different world in terms of um, the pace of life. In that, you know, because it's basically a big overgrown 
farming community, so people are really friendly, and the pace of life is much slower. You're originally from Buffalo, and you like the snow. We're really funny about snow here. Other parts of the country just laugh at us because we get a half an inch of snow in Portland. It'll almost shut the city down. <laughs> Threats of snow shut the city down. <laughs> in my last job, the people, we, we were uh, owned by, our bank was owned by the Spiegel Company in Chicago and they had a really hard time understanding how we had so many people off work when it snowed because <laughs> they you know if they were going to close for snow it'd be because they were you know 52 degrees below and I'm exaggerating but um, feet of snow <laughs> and we, um, we'd get half an inch of snow and people would start calling in. They couldn't make it out of their driveways and thing and another. <laughs> you know, it was crazy. But the people in Chicago had a real hard time understanding us. <laughs> Okay, you know what a nice hubby I have? My hubby went to Sonic before the broadcast today and came back with a Diet Coke for me. Isn't that a good hubby? That is a good man right there. I know you all think he's a prince because I tell you he's a prince all the time. But he has an evil streak, I'm telling you. <laughs> Where was I living? I was living right here in Portland. <laughs> yeah, um, that was not that way when I lived in Spokane. In Spokane, you pretty much just keep going with life. And I learned to drive in it over there, so that was good. I lived in Yakima and then Spokane. How long have I been drinking Diet Coke? Um, since I got old enough to realize that the, fir the real kind was full of sugar, so <laughs> probably my 20s or 30s. <laughs> A long time. I haven't always drank as much of it as I do now. I used to be a coffee drinker. I drink an awful lot of coffee. And I drink less coffee now. I still like it. I like coffee very much, but I'm not around other coffee drinkers if I was. Oh, it almost killed you? Wow. How did it almost kill you? Yeah. Um, yeah, in, uh, that's true, Mary R. And um, if we get snow at all in Portland, it will be between January and March. That is exactly true. Oh, really? Huh. Okay. I got Bentley layered up. I'm going to go ahead and layer up my other two while I'm here since I know that we're going to use those. Then we can just whip these three cards out and then we'll stop and make some more, huh? This one, this um, has kind of a tricky little ring on this. 
on these three images. What I do with this is cut your foam squares in half. You still want to support that ring, but it's pretty narrow. So I'd cut your little foam squares in half and then run them lengthwise along that this little ring because it's and this isn't the first time I tore it I tore I tore one when I was making my originals too but it's not a big deal I could just put my tape there and it'll be fine these sure are cute I love the faces of these dogs they did a really good job of capturing really really um, interested looks on the faces of the dogs. I haven't had any trouble with it. I haven't had any trouble with my Diet Coke up to this point, but there may come a time when I do. Okay, I'll flip this over. figure out what I did with my foam squares. You didn't need a whole sheet of foam squares with this, but yet quite a bit. I was working last night on a new project for you. I have it ready. You may have seen it. I listed it out in the store last night. It's pretty fun. I think it will be our, well, that's not true. I was going to say it'll be our last Christmas, but um, it'll be the last Christmas class, um, card class that we do. I figure after Thanksgiving, we probably don't want a lot of, a lot of new Christmas cards because most of you will be sending them by now if you're mailing them out. So... I don't think we'll have a lot of new Christmas cards. We do have some other gift projects to do, if you're interested in doing those. Like the coasters, those have come up after the 1st of December. I know that's when I was watching my video last night to do the, getting ready to do the newsletter, which I didn't get done yet. Um, but as I was watching the video back, I said after the first of the year. I didn't mean we'd do coasters after the first of the year. I meant we'd do coasters after the first of the month. So we'll do them like, um, well, really as soon as the paint comes in. <laughs> Hopefully the paint will come soon. It was due in to the distributor so I went ahead and ordered it but it seems to be running a little late so hopefully it's just a little late or I'll rethink our projects because sometimes I have to do that too but I'd like to do the coasters because that's really fun I made several sets of coasters as gifts for my friends last year I made almost all my gifts last year, in part because he kept me sane, because I don't remember, I don't know how many of you guys were, I, I know quite a few of you were around last year, we had a house fire, not a, a super serious one, but enough to be disrupting of our lives right before Christmas, it was like the ninth, and so making all of my oh good you guys both got go, both got the advent boxes excellent um yeah so i made all my gifts last year just about i had my regular card boxes which uh, we talk about all the time and i gave those and then i made scarves for everyone using the same technique that I showed you back in the spring and I made I didn't I haven't shown you my clocks but I made decoupage clocks for several people 
Um, we will have cork, cork on the back of our, or, yes, we will have self-adhesive cork to put on the back of our coasters. So they will be decoupaged on the front and they will have cork on the back. That's mostly to keep them from sliding on your table. But they will have that. That um, I, I noticed that for a short time, our advent calendar ran out of stock. Um, I had to wait for uh, more um, Mod Podge to come in. We have that now. And um, I had all the kits done, but I, didn't, I only had a limited number of Mod Podge at first. And so I only listed the kits I knew I could supply everything for initially. And then I realized last night that we ran out, so I ran in and put some more in. So if you were looking for the advent calendar and didn't get one, they are out there and available again. It's really going to be a fun project, I think. Very different. Still paper crafting, but a little different take on paper crafting, which I think is always fun. You can use paper to do other things. I was looking at that, um, at the paper packs that I got to do the advent calendars, and I'm going to list a whole bunch of those because they had to be purchased in a minimum quantity, and we, in our two-inch squares, didn't use all of them. But they're going to be, there's some really nice patterns there that would be beautiful for card making. It's light. So I'd probably put it on cardstock, but it will be a fun and useful material to have available for card making. So if you like any of those patterns in the paper, watch for those to come up because they're... Come on, let go. <laughs> the, you'll notice from the little two inch squares so it is very very light paper but there's some really nice prints in it i like the fact that a lot of those prints are kind of mini prints which can be really beautiful for backgrounds for card making How you guys doing with your layering? Anybody working along with me today? Hey, Thelma shared with me a great idea. Here we go. Thelma ran across a video where they were doing um, progress checks. And when people were working along, they were acknowledging that it's hard to work along and type at the same time. So instead of having to type, yes, I'm right with you, if you're right with me when we're working along, you just type a one. Everything's fine. I'm tracking fine. If you're struggling to stay up and need more time, you don't have to say, stop, I need more time. You just need to type a two. And I like that idea. We should implement that. One for I'm doing fine. Just hit the one key, and two, four, I need a little more time. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, what are we saying here? Debbie got Brittany and Margie in front of the camera. Now it's Bryce's turn. <laughs> I think we might wait a while for that. I think the one video that you saw that Bryce is probably going to... Be mad at me for this. That may be the only chance you see to you have to see Bryce for a while. Thelma's tracking fine. One. Thank you, Thelma. <laughs> Anybody else working with me? Give me a one. <laughs> so Patrice says type a three and see what she does, Bryce. <laughs> You're Henri. <laughs> 
I like it, but you're Henri. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. I'll line up my little Pomeranian dude here. I should have shown you this. This is what I'm doing with my little foam squares, guys. I'm cutting them in half. See, to go around the ring. <laughs> Three I'm working on a different kit. That's cool. That's cool, Darius one. Okay, excellent. <laughs> excellent. I never mind if you're working on something different, especially since, you know, I, I never mind anyway, because I just like that you hang out with us. But um, I know that sometimes kits don't arrive before your class date, especially when I'm late getting them up. But, oh, playing with flourishing florals. That looks, that sounds fun. I love those kits. I really, really like those floral kits. That's one of my favorites of the year. And they do that every year, but I love those. I always look forward to when those come out. Oh, you're working on your snowman. That, that's really fun, too. And you're doing Margie's Banner. Well, you guys have some nice projects going on. Really nice projects going on. Super. I went ahead and offered those some um, kits on Brit's Bargain this week. So you guys could get those done before Thanksgiving if you were inclined to to do that i'm way i'm ready to put mine up as soon as i figure out what i did with it <laughs> it's here it's here you know i keep everything as samples and i know it's here i just don't know where i put it to protect it <laughs> so i have to locate it <laughs> oh hortensia that's a fun one too well, good. You guys have a nice variety of classes you're working out there. That's awesome. We have had some really fun kids, I have to say. Really fun. When I think about everything that we've done this year, it's pretty amazing how much variety we've had in our classes. And there's more to come because I've got all kinds of interesting things lined up for the new year. I'm really mad at one of my distributors because I had three projects planned using some of the older graphic 45 papers that were going out and I could offer the kits more affordably because they were discounting both the graphic 45 and some of the embellishments, but they didn't have a wide variety of embellishments. So I ordered the papers from one of my distributors and a few of the embellishments there. Then I went to Graphic 45 and got the other pieces. And I was so excited to be able to offer these fun kits that you just weren't going to find anywhere else because the papers were retired. And I'll be darned if after I ordered all these wonderful embellishments to match the paper, my distributor didn't cancel all, all of my paper. So now I have all these embellishments and no paper to go with it. I'm not happy with them over that. Not at all happy. Okay. I am going to... 
cut this black paper. I'm just taking a look at my card samples here to make sure I'm not going to mess myself up if I cut it in four pieces. Looks like that's probably going to be a good way to go. I know! That was just rude! I actually wrote to them and told them. I usually really like you guys. One of the things they do that's really nice at that particular distributor is that they have a inventory checker on their system. So when you go to order something, you can actually check the available inventory before you order. And that gives you the reassurance that they're going to be able to ship. And that's exactly what I did. I checked the inventory of all of these papers that I bought. And they all said they had a limited supply, but a supply in stock. And all three of them got canceled. And that was three different classes that I was really excited about. So I wrote to them and said, I'm not happy with you. I usually like you a lot, but right now I'm mad at you. They won't do any good. They still don't have them, but I can tell them they need to update their inventory. And truthfully, you know, they're probably just like everybody else, that they've probably been working on a limited crew and haven't had haven't had the time to keep things as up to date as they would like to. I'm changing my sandwich here because it doesn't want to feed through my machine. There we go. Oh, somebody's got a sick doggy. Hi, Karen. pets. We never want to hear a pet sick. Yeah, I'll figure out something to do with them. Look at this beautiful black paper run through the embossing folder. Isn't that just amazing? Now, can you see where that would be useful all year? I can. There's nothing that says that's inherently Christmas. Let me see what I need for my others. Is there anything else? I need a red one. Yeah, I'll just set these aside. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I think, and cut my die cuts, too. I'm going to... Oops. Scratch up my paper there. I'm going to need some die cuts also. I'll use one of my small sheets for my die cutter. Okay, one, two, three. Actually, I'm going to use the big sheet. What I'm going to do with the big sheet is I'm going to cut this one in half lengthwise. Just planning out where how I need to use my pieces to maximize this paper, guys. So I'm going to cut this in half lengthwise, which is going to mean that I'm going to cut one strip that's like four and... I'm actually going to go to four and a quarter. And then I'm going to use this sheet for cutting my readings out of because I needed a long mat for my story card. Now, because I have more than one die going through this die cutter at a time, I'm going to tape my dies in place so they don't mess up and stack up. The 
the size of the Black Mary. I took it from, it was the Black Mary. I started with um, European A4, which is four and a quarter by eight and three quarters. And I cut it into four pieces that were four and an eighth by five and seven eighths. So that's what I did with the Black Mary to start with, with this first sheet. Then I took the Gold Mary and I cut it in half. So I made it four and a quarter. Oops, I'm gonna have to run that again. Maybe, I don't think I need a shim. I just ran it through one time. I could put a shim in with it. A piece of cardstock I had sitting here. We'll run that back through. There we go. Okay. There we go. That's looking better. I'll pop these off. We'll be ready for the next batch. And I will pop these out. These dies cut really well. And even though it's words and words can get a little tangly when you go to take them off, these don't get particularly dangly at all. There we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and put our little dog together. We will start with one of our European A6 cards. And some tape. Hi, Teddy. You going to come here and say hi? As soon as I said hi, he took off and went the other way because he knew I'd snag him so he could be seen on camera. He said, no, I'm not. That would require being more social than I intend to be at the moment. <laughs> I don't want to be social, he said. Don't make me be social, he said. When you put this paper into your embossing folder, just kind of center it between the diamonds. We have just a little bit of trim since I pre-cut this card. I'm going to have just a little bit of white showing. I don't know if you can see it there on the edge. A tiny bit of white. I'm just going to trim that off. It's no big deal. Just because I pre-cut my card. And the other piece is maybe just a little bit longer. And now I don't have white showing. <laughs> Let's take a little Bentley. I think I'll put Bentley up on some foam squares. I'm going to take my little glue bottle. <laughs> There's not a lot of extra prep to do with this one. Once we assemble our topper and run our Mary through our folder, this one sure goes together fast. Putting just a little bead of adhesive. That's when I love these little glue bottles when you do projects like this one right here. If you don't have one of these, pick it up because it's two bucks for these little glue bottles and they will save you endless amounts of, of time because it's just a really nice way to, to apply glue to many surfaces. We could make that M-I-N-I -I and M-A-N-Y. <laughs> many surfaces. And many surfaces. 
Okay. Now these Merry Christmas comes attached together, but when we want to, we can cut this apart in two words, and it works great for that. I'm going to put Merry Christmas right across the bottom here. One nice thing about having it together is it kind of self-spaces. I'm going to get my wet wipe out here. I see just a little bit of glue came over from the front. And you might say, well, that dries clear. Why do you worry about it? Because it is glossy. You know, that mirror finish shows all any glue that's on there. And we don't want that. So I just tap it off a little bit with my wet wipe, dry it off with a dry cloth, which I know I had some paper towels or napkins sitting here. I'm just gonna go in and dry it now. And then it will be beautifully shiny. And no glue showing, which I very much prefer. Okay, I'm going to put this at the top. And once again, I'm just going to take my little glue bottle. I'm going to hit each of my berries because those are the ones that will fold back. You know how you get an element that tries to fold back on you on your card. And then it just doesn't look as nice, doesn't look as finished or professional. So I'm going to hit each of these little berries with a little dab of glue on the back. Just a tad. Just enough to make them stick and stay put where I have them. And I'm going to put this at the top and the swag kind of has a, a downward curve or I suppose an upward curve depending on which direction you use it. So I'm putting that curve down and now I'm going to put a Bentley on some foam squares as soon as I figure out what I did with them again. <laughs> you ever see somebody who would lose stuff so fast? I'm ridiculous about it. Come on, they're right here. I know they are. They're right here somewhere. <laughs> Um, hmm. yeah. I think I have more. Let's see if I don't. I'll just grab another sheet because as soon as I do that, the first one will show up. Okay. And put these on the back of old Bentley. Keep calling him old Bentley. He's not old. He's only two. He just had his second birthday over the summer. And his mom, Lisa, always does a birthday party for him at puppy daycare. He's got a rough life, Bentley. <laughs> He's got a really good puppy mom and Lisa. And then he got a new brother last year. Lisa rescued another Yorkie that she calls Jags, so she has a Jags and a Bentley. <laughs> okay, he's going to go slightly above the midpoint, and Bentley is done. Isn't that cute? I love it. Okay, we got Bentley done. On to card number two. Let's do... Oh, I figured we'd do the first one that showed up, which is this one. So let's do this one. We're going to use an A6 card. That's not an A6. We're going to use an A6 card. 
We are going to cover that card with some mirror board. And I sent you some A6 Mary. Let's grab one of those. Nope, not that one. I had those A6 right in my hand a second ago. There's one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just, you know, I have plenty of room to work here, and it's not a huge crafting surface. You would think I would be able to hang on to things in this span of, for this span of time and this much space, but no. <laughs> the fact that my work area always gets cluttered doesn't help. I have paper strung this way and that way when I'm working. And that definitely does not help that I'm not as more organized. And I approach. Maybe someday I'll figure out a system that works for me for that, but in all these years I haven't, so. If I ever get organized, I'll probably stop being creative, so. <laughs> I think I'll opt for creative. And my scissors out. And I have my scissors out. Oh, there they are. Way over there. Teddy left in prose has saw those doggy cards and not one poodle. Although they're, the Havanese looks a little like a poodle, don't you think? I called that my Teddy card out of the crew, but yeah. Hey. It was kind of unfair that they didn't have a red poodle in the bunch. I have to admit that was that was a little discriminatory against my poor Ted. Okay, we got that one. We're gonna go to our paper pack. Let's get our paper pack out and let's find the one that has the uh, the um, Yorkie and the Palm and the Havanese in little circles. I love this paper pack. There's really some fun prints in here for all kinds of projects. And I really liked the red side. You could use the green side if you prefer, but I used the red side. And I know that my card is four and a quarter by five and seven eighths, so I'm going to cut this to three and seven eighths. I want eight inch borders, so I'm going to go to three and seven eighths wide by, it's actually now six inches long, so I'm going to go to five and just a little over five and five eighths. <clears throat> And that's a good match. And this is nice heavy paper, so I don't have to worry about using glue on it. It'll hold up to the glue and not, not um, give a ridge line there. So I'll go ahead and put my glue on the back. That's just right. Give me a nice border all the way around. I'm going to run a piece of my green <coughs> through the embossing folder. I think I'll start by cutting my green in half and just make it a little bit more manageable. And then I'm going to get my folder out here and I think that one pass through will give me what I need for two cards do with the folder now
There it is. Peeking out from under my trimmer. <clears throat> Got my green cardstock. Put it in my folder. Only have to make one pass with an embossing folder and get a nice emboss. With most machines, has been my. Now you can either use the embossed side or the debossed. That's the embossed side, or you can use the debossed side, which means that the the pattern is pushed into it. Now. You may want to make that decision with this paper based on the fact that this paper has a white core. And see when I was holding it up at that angle that you can see the white a little bit. But on the debossed side, you don't see that. You have a couple choices. You can either use the debossed side or you can use one of your ink pads or you can use some of your metallic inks or you can there's a multitude of things that you could do that we could go over the top and hit the tops of these diamonds and the little um, stars and things there and it, you know the areas that it's pushed up you could use an ink pad if you wanted to to color anything that's currently white and actually make it part of your design just in the interest of time today, and because I don't usually do inks on Saturdays, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the debossed side, which actually doesn't show that white the way that the embossed side does. So I'm going to trim this down. The first thing I'm going to do is trim off the where the edge of my folder went. And then I'm going to, I'm going to run, I'm going to cut it so that I have two diamonds wide to start with, because that's roughly half of the card stock, and then I have the other piece for my other card. Now this is going to be a little bit wider than I want. I want to let more of that background paper show with those really cute dogs. So I think that's a little wider than I want. So what I'm going to do here is take a little bit off of each side and kind of keep my pattern centered. Just because it is kind of a wide, a, a big pattern in this embossing folder. Bryce is in the office working on things for work. It's his busy time of the year right now because <clears throat> he's an HR manager and they're doing open enrollment, new insurance stuff. And so he is taking every opportunity he can get to run off and work on work stuff. So he's here in the off excuse me, in the office adjacent to where I'm working. In case we have any technical problems, he can pop back in, but he's working on his own thing right now. I'm gonna go even still I took about a quarter of an inch off either side and I'm gonna go even a little bit narrower because I still think we have an awful lot of this strip compared to the background strip. So I'm cutting this to where my pattern is even and my final strip is two inches. Let me show you how that looks because I like that. I think that looks really good. That gives me a nice amount of my background still showing. And I'm going to use this long piece of mirror board that we have here. And I'm going to cut myself some little strips. Now you guys are always asking me about this. Can we, can we um, just use strips instead of <coughs> running the entire piece underneath and the answer to that is yes you can I'm going to cut myself 
a couple of quarter inch strips here. Let me get my straight edge. Actually, I don't want them quarter inch. I'm just going to cut eighth inch strips. I'm going to cut myself a couple of eighth inch strips and glue them down this time as opposed to... Oh, that's too wide, Deborah. Go back. Go back. That's where I went in. As opposed to running this all underneath, because I'm, as I'm looking at this, I'm a little worried about having enough material, so I'm going to use trim strips this time instead of full sheets underneath. We probably have plenty of material, but sometimes I worry. So, let's see. This was uh, four, five and five eighths, just a little over five and five eighths. So I'm going to trim this green strip down to go on top here. That's a perfect fit. So I'll go ahead and glue this down. Yeah, he's really quiet today. He tends to be quieter this time of year when he's thinking and contemplating and worrying about getting everything done. Don't we all, though? We're kind of distracted and pushing to finish things. And I'm going to trim this with some trim strips. I could either go up on top of my mirror board or I could go along the sides. And I think I'm going to go along the sides of my Mary, or of my, I'm going to go along the sides of my embossed card. Then I'll show you both of them and you can see which style you prefer. I think they both look good. But if you're wanting to save Mary on layering, this is one way you can do it. <coughs> These little trim strips. little glue there. Take that off. Get my paper towel and dry that then. And I'm going to clip it right at the end. That looks good. I'll get this one on. <clears throat> this time I'm trying putting the line actually on my cardstock instead of the trim strip to see if I get less glue on it. I think that's going to work well. And it gives me a nice place to seat that right next to the, working right next to the cardstock that way. It just butts right up against the cardstock and gives me a nice line. I'll show you. A little bit of glue at the bottom there. Wipe that off. Okay. Here's the one I just did with the trim strips. Let's see, really, here's the one that I did with the running it underneath. So you can actually kind of save on your materials and yeah, you can't, it's, it's challenging to do eighth inch strips with some trimmers, but this one handles it really well. <clears throat> okay, for this one we need some black. We happen to have this nice piece of black here. 
so we'll get some nice black lettering and now we'll do with the dies. <laughs> I tell you guys, I'm a disaster right now most of the time. One thing that would be useful to me would be to stand this cardstock and things up so it doesn't take up so much of my table space. That's one thing I should try. It's just putting a little sorter stand here. There's my foam squares I couldn't find. Told you I'd find them after I didn't need them anymore. That would help if I would do that. Probably. Might not solve all of my organizational problems, but a little bit of it. Where's my dice? Not under my trimmer. There they are. I see it sticking out from under my plates over there. No, I don't. That's my... Those are... That's my sticker sheet. So we'll move over here. You're having a birthday party, Annette? Whose birthday is it? Hi, Katie. <laughs> okay. What did I do with them? There they are. Shoot, I just... I remember now I set them over there and I said I'm just going to leave these right on the strip. <laughs> After I look through everything. Hi! Are the girls with you? Stand that up over there too. I'm going to go ahead and cut this black one. I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple of these blacks because I can see that I have several of them that I'm going to be using so I might as well cut a couple of these while I'm cutting don't you suppose of course it'd be one more thing for me to lose I have the wrong plate in I have too many plates in is what I did get my show back in here too go. That's not the right combination. I'll get it figured out too, guys. I'll just knock something off. My scissors, I guess. Okay. Let's see. Let's try that again. Get the right plates. Embossing. No cutting. No cut. No embossing. I'm cutting. <laughs> okay. Yes, me too. I'm forever losing stuff when I'm putting it somewhere safe. That's why when I've started putting it somewhere safe, I'm telling somebody else where my safe was. <laughs> Come on. Let's be cooperative machine. One of my plates is kind of buckled, so it's being a pain. I probably need to replace one, but... It takes me a while to admit that I'm willing to give one up. You can really prolong the life of these plates by flipping them and turning them, but they all still have a limit.
Yeah, I really have a hard time giving up on my plates. That's money spent where you don't see funness, you know, coming right from... I mean, you get to have good embossed images, and you always have such an appreciation for a new plate when you finally break down and put one in. But... It's not my preference to spend money on those kinds of things until I absolutely have to. This um, die that I'm sending you has really good pokey holes. You know how some dies just don't have enough of them? These, this has good pokey holes. <laughs> so you can get all those little bits out and out of your way. Okay, I'll cut another one or two of these here. How are your projects going, guys? All the kits going well? Oh, purple sparkle plates. Oh, <laughs> Patrice has a five. Okay, you got to give me a clue what a five means, Patrice. <laughs> Just finished my brownie. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you guys crack me up. I kind of got this one shifted a little bit after I put it in on my buckled plate. I have to see whether or not I'm going to still use this one. I might have to recut that, Mary. I really think these are nice dies. Do you know that the retail of these dies was twelve ninety five, and they're just included in your kit at a way lesser price than that, I might add. You heard me say it before. When I get good deals, I try to pass those deals along, and sometimes it may be at retail in the store. But then when I build a kit out of it, I have that latitude to <clears throat> adjust the price a little bit more for the kit style. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I know I need at least three of these blacks. So. Get one more of these. Patrice thinks I'm going to confiscate her number keys, honey. Did you hear what she did with my numbering system? <laughs> Five equals I just finished my brownie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh. These guys crack me up. <laughs> oh, you guys. You make me happy.
Okay, I'm going to set this aside. I'm putting it to my left. So when I wonder where my safe spot was, you guys can say, look to your left. Okay. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Okay. So we're back here. We got our little Havanese. You're going to put a little foam squares under him. We don't have to, but it does give him a little extra dimension if we give him a few little foam squares under him. And why not? Unless you're concerned with your postman charging you extra, we might as well get that extra little bit of lift there. I do give these plenty of foam squares for these lighter weight ones because they can just buckle instead of instead of you know the layers taking any of the force they can get bent there so I give them lots of foam squares under these little or these lighter weight toppers <laughs> Brenda says, now we have to keep track of her stuff. Who's going to keep track of ours? <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's very funny. <laughs> All right. Point taken. <laughs> I'll just leave it up to you then. You don't have to say a word. You can watch me just struggle to find it and laugh. <laughs> That's okay too. <laughs> oh. There you go. We'll all have our safe place on our left. <laughs> Unless, of course, the left is the dog's watering dish or something. That might not be a good idea. <clears throat> just dotting this like I did before. Just putting little dots along my letters so that they will all stay down and attached like I want them to. I laid that right into my hand with all those little lots of glue on it. <laughs> oh, I, have, I practically craft on the floor. I lose stuff on the floor all the time. I have to admit, I think my daughter was right about the color. I think I do like the, I do think this is more, um, I don't know, sophisticated looking maybe with a little darker green. The light green was fine, but I think the darker green is going to be an advantage. You guys can tell me what you think when we get done here. See whether you like the lighter or the darker. I sent you the darker, but I'm sure you all have green card stocks. So if you decided you wanted a different one, it would really not be much of a challenge. <clears throat> this is number two. We're finishing our little Havanese, and we'll do our Pomeranian. Oh, we got this one on the bottom this time, so I'm going to turn my arch upward under my dog image. Now, once again, these dies were not sold with these dogs. These are just dies that I brought in. But I do think that with the round hoppers, the arched Merry Christmas and, and the berry spray are particularly effective with the arches and the images.
So Patrice thinks the darker one. My latest typo had me crying today from laughing so hard. It's in the new class listing. What did I do, Brenda? What did I do? See you, Daria. Bye. Yeah, you guys um, have to watch when you get my kid. Hmm. So I wonder what I did. Are you going to tell me what I did? Ms. Brenda. Yeah, that was Lauren's thought. She thought the light green just wasn't a, a perfect match. Okay, let's do our Pomeranian. And for the Pomeranian, I gave you this piece of paper for cutouts. With the palm, we're going to emboss the red card stock. So I'll cut this in half to get this little operation started. What did I do? Your latest typo had me crying today from laughing so hard. It's in the new class listing. What did I do in the new class listing, honey? I was, that was kind of a, do you want to look? Oh, I don't know what I did. <laughs> I know I did it in the middle of the night, so there's no telling what I did. <laughs> It's a bad typo, though, huh? Or a good typo, as typos go. It was funny. Okay, well, that's something. <laughs> Bidenitis. Do I have Bidenitis? <laughs> Got me wondering what else you need section you had luge instead of glue oh really okay <laughs> all righty then <laughs> I don't know how I managed that but that's funny <laughs> I guess it could have been worse it could have been lube instead of glue or <laughs> it could have been worse. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Patrice said it'd be kind of hard to craft while going down the luge, but I'll try anything once. <laughs> Dear. And that was a real word, so spell checker didn't catch it. <laughs> hmm. Okay. All right. Once again, I'm using white core cardstock. So you can see the little white bits on this side. But this side's fine, so I'm going to use the deboss side because I don't want to take the time to hit the tops with accent inks or other. But you do know that <laughs> um, but you do know that's a way you can take care of white core and cardstock. <clears throat> I thought about going down and getting some dark colored core, but I thought well this will give me a chance to talk about that, so I didn't. I'm going to cut this in half to start with. It's currently five and three quarters. I'm going to cut it to, well, let's see. I'm just going to cut it to where I want it, I think. Is that going to give me an even pattern? I'm going to go to two and a quarter because that gives me an even pattern. And then I'm going to trim it back on both sides until I get to 
two inches. <coughs> Okay. All right. So I got my two inch strip and I'm liking that. Oh, you know what I just did? <laughs> well, I can still fix this. I meant to have one solid under there, but you know what? I can use the same technique. So let's do that. I have this piece here from our first card. I'm just going to do this the same way that I did the gold strips. And I'm gonna use this anyway. I intended, and I just lost my mind there, I intended to layer this, but I'm just gonna do the same thing I did last time. This time we're letting the white be our border. So I'm gonna cut these to be, let's see, we need them, they're currently six inches long. We need them to be five, just a little over five and five eighths. I'm gonna cut this red one in half to be one inch on either side. And am I gonna like that okay? I think these need to be just a tad shorter. So I'm going to take just a tiny bit off. Just a tiny little microscopic bit off those two. I want this one and this one to be the same length. <coughs> so I'm just going to hold this up here and cut these together. I want this to be the same length as my red strips. I think I'll start by putting my middle strip in. <laughs> Patrice told me to look to my left. That might be where my mind is. Crack up, lady. I'm so glad you joined us. <laughs> or just say you sanded it. That's true. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. Tell you what I'm going to do with these. I'm going to just figure out where I want them and I'm going to glue. Nothing says the green strip has to be on the top, guys. I'm going to glue this over my green strip where I want it because that will make it easier than continuing to trim these down. So I'm going to put these red strips. I'm just going to glue them down on top where I want them to be to give me the borders I want. We're doing lots of creative paper piecing here today, but why not? It's Saturday. <laughs> they lost their sense of humor on their left. <laughs> I love to laugh. <laughs> you probably figured that out. Because it's just my nature. <laughs> my sense of humor has always been both a blessing and a curse. Because, you know, I think I told you that my last career was in HR. So I would think it, but I couldn't always say it. <laughs> Okay, let's get our palm, well, we can, uh, let's see, we'll get our 
we'll get our die cutting white die cutting pieces done that means I want these two that's an embossing plate Put that up there I get my two bigger plates I'm going to reach over here to my safe place get my dies Yes, so much better than whining. <laughs> so much better. And since I have those taped together, I might just as well have them help me hold the paper. Oops, let's get that on my cutting plate instead of my base plate though. That would be better. out. That looks good. What do you guys think of the white lettering? Would you have preferred to have darker lettering? I was just trying to make them different. But I was kind of indecisive, just a little bit indecisive about the white lettering. The others are so much shinier. But I thought it looked okay, it just was something different. If you don't like the white, you could certainly substitute something else. I was just thinking about when I was holding these scissors, I was thinking about when we did our um, diamond dots and we had those in the kit. I just ordered some new diamond dot kits where the background paper, not diamond dots, dot and dos. The background paper in the dot and dos is colored. Oh yeah, some inking around the edges would be really nice. That would be good. That actually would be really good, I think, Brenda. That's a great idea. I'm not going to take the time to do it right now, but that would be a, an excellent touch to these. So anyway, these new um, Dot and Do kits have um, colored background paper, and then with the um, shiny dots, the mirrored dots, it looks really nice. And they're putting um, punch-out images instead of cut-out images in some of the newer ones. Which is pretty cool, actually. So you don't have to take the time to fussy cut, although three little images, it doesn't take too long. Yeah. That's what I thought too, Thelma. That's what led me to try the white is because I left the white card around the outside. Okay, where's our other little... There he is. There's our Pomeranian. And I put him up on some foam scores. I actually think that because I glued the card the way I did, I'm going to glue this one flat down because it can help keep my card secured there where I have all those layers. It kind of overlaps those layers. So I'm going to glue this one flat just because of the way I did this. A little higher than, cent than center. And we will put some little glue dots on our die cutting.
Yeah, if you do, if you um, inked around the edges of these a little bit or inked them a little bit, I think you'd want to ink around the card a little bit too. You know, just around the edges of it, that would look really nice. Oh, I did not, but that would be really cute to use stickles on the pom-poms. <clears throat> That'd be really cute. Sweet ideas. You see nothing when I hold it up here and do that, huh? Well, I'll hold it down here. <laughs> <clears throat> One nice thing about the cardstock, rather than the mirror board, is it's not quite so sensitive about glue showing. If I have any glue on the front, I'll probably still wipe it off, but it's not as sensitive about that. That reflective surface really shows if you get any glue on the front. <coughs> now what I did not do, I want to show you the difference between the two of these, or show you the two of them. Um, you really can't see, I didn't put the um, extra gold stars on this one yet. You can certainly do that on your own if you want to. I just cut out the the berry cluster and cut off the berries but you really can't see any difference and one has just strips and the other has layers so I think we can declare that that definitely can be done to save on paper okay that one's done three done now we're gonna have to layer something up again Let's see what we got here. We got our bunny, <coughs> our kitty, and our little dog. And what are we going to need here? We're going to need a Merry Christmas, which we have, and a berry sprig, which we have. Then we're going to need, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to need some... Um, we're going to need some black Miri to trim that out. We got the gold, the gold layers. Okay, let's do our layering up next. Whoops, we're going to need one of these. We'll get this one out. I had the nicest surprise the other day when I opened one of these, and instead of just filler paper in the back of this, they usually give you a sheet of paper behind them, but they gave me pearl paper, beautiful pearl paper. It almost looks like they might have done that here. Let's see what they got. Look at this. There it is. They did it again. They gave me pearl paper in it. I wouldn't count on it, but how's that? <laughs> yeah. Jump out of the paper and run off with the sprig. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I think that somebody was just, you know, working on putting these together and didn't want to go get the cheap paper they usually put in here. That's the second time I've had that happen, though, which is pretty cool. So maybe you'll get that, too. I don't know. I didn't use it in this. I didn't count on it being there, because as soon as we count on it, that it wouldn't be there. But it's a nice color. Okay, layering squares. <laughs> you notice I haven't lost them in minutes. <laughs> okay. So let's see, with this kit that I just did, I'm done making kits for the month of November. We have the we have the advent calendar box next Thursday, the new kit that I just did the following Saturday. Or one of these Saturdays, I don't know, I have to look at the calendar. 
and then we have Thanksgiving. Yeah, we have Thanksgiving, that's right. We have Thanksgiving then, and then we have our party on the following Saturday. I want to talk about the party a little bit. Um, <clears throat> Margie, Brittany, and Bryce and I talked about it after class the other day, and we decided that we thought you guys would be more relaxed and have more fun if we just do this and the, do the party in the normal way. I know that we could hey, we could make it more interactive with Zoom and things, but I think a lot of people are going to get stressed out about getting into a new format and potentially missing it. So we decided we're just going to do it our normal way. So I hope that's okay with everybody. That's what we... That's what we decided to go with. What's your thought about that? Is that okay? When we do the party. And I think we'll plan the party to run between 2 and 5. Yes, it's going to be this Saturday after Thanksgiving. Okay, good, good. That's what I kind of thought I was hearing from you the other day. And truly, you know, we have enough trouble making this technology work sometimes. Trying something new was a little scary to me on a day that was important to me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, 2 Pacific time, Eddie. Thank you for that clarification. 2 o'clock Pacific time on the Saturday after... Thanksgiving. I don't have my calendar right here. What's the date of that Saturday after Thanksgiving, guys? <clears throat> Can somebody tell us that? I'll put it on the schedule anyway. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on the schedule. You know, it will be scheduled just like it's a live stream. It'll say live stream party. <laughs> Live stream craft party. How's that? <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. So we have a date. We have a time. I have a rough agenda. And I just need to round up lots of prizes and get our game situated. And I think we will be about ready to go with it. So I'm pretty excited about doing the party. Something I've been wanting to do for a while. I got my bunny on there. Caddy Wampus, so I'm fixing him. There we go. Okay, got my bunny done. Let's go ahead and layer up these other two while we're at it. Uh... Well, I will schedule it for the for um, 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we end at daylight savings time, Patrice. Um, I will schedule it for 2 o'clock Pacific time. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't the um, doesn't YouTube automatically adjust for your time zone, guys? <laughs> Mary R wants to know if you're making cake and ice cream for them, honey. He says he'll make you virtual cake and ice cream in honor of the event. <laughs> yeah, YouTube adjusts. So what I will do is I will get it scheduled on YouTube. Then you can set yourself a reminder on YouTube and it will show you the right time. Okay. No calories either, they say. <laughs> Good point, Katie. <laughs> Good point, friend. <clears throat> okay. Put all my pieces punched out. Get some foam squares under here. And we get this show on the road again. You like these little cards, guys? Aren't they cute? I 
a little more work than our snowman cards, but I think they're cute. Super cute, actually. Because they're pets. <laughs> YouTube doesn't follow you to your study. Oh, to your studio. It's lazy. Okay. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Brenda, we have, um, I, I, I was reading the other day that the state of Oregon, Oregon, Washington, and California petitioned to do away with daylight savings time, but the feds wouldn't let us because we're just getting too many zones. So if the entire United States decides to do away with daylight savings time, then we'll be allowed to, but I go, I guess that makes some sense that there would be some limitations to yeah same thing you know there can only be so many time zones in one country and Arizona kind of slid in early and and got it taken care of but the rest of us, we have to decide as a country that we're going to do away with it. And I suppose that really does make some sense, but I would kind of like to see it go away too. That's crazy. But if the farmers didn't have lights in their combines, couldn't they just work when it was light? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Crazy. It's a crazy thing, daylight savings time. Let's just all run around and change our clocks twice a year. <laughs> Well, that's true, because Canada being different would be weirdness, too, wouldn't it? Okay, one left. <laughs> Maybe that was it. The rest of us didn't want to get up that early. <laughs> Have a drink of pop. Margie bought me a, or made me a little sign to go in my classroom here, Thelma, and it says, um, Oh, I have to, hey Bryce, will you bring me that? Bring you that? My little sign by the door. Actually, Margie took this picture when she was out somewhere and gave it to me and I put it on a piece of backer paper so I could hang it up in my classroom because this is what I think about the early bird gets the worm. <laughs> the early bird can have the worm because worms are gross and mornings are stupid. <laughs> said she thought it sounded just like me. <laughs> Go back to my original sheet of home scores because now I've lost the replacement.
<laughs> well, that's what I think, Alice. Mornings are for, or Mary, that mornings are for sleeping. <laughs> you guys see what time the, <laughs> you guys see what time the newsletters come out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look left. <laughs> Good point, Brenda, except they're not there. <laughs> Nor are my cutting dice, actually. All my cutting dice to my right now. See? I'm putting it back on the left. <laughs> Mary's sleeping, Alice is on the left. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, crazy. We you know when I'm president, we'll do away with daylight savings time. We will. We might just um, block out all the numbers before noon, too. I'm up at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> you get up every day, Thelma, at that time? Yeah, go see Grandpa. <laughs> Where are you going? If he does want to go pick him up and bring him over here, please. Bryce was chasing Teddy around trying to get him to come over here and say hello, but he just ran off because he wasn't into being social. He just wanted Bryce to get up and open the door so he could see what was happening outside. He didn't want to go out, mind you. He just wanted to see what was happening out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thelma, how could you get up that early? Why would you want to? <laughs> uh, I get up at 5 a.m. every day, start work at 6, and wake up by 10. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much what I would have done. Let's see, where do you go? Oh, you go on this other package. Is he in there giving you loves when he would not come here to me? I hear puppy loves happening in the office. Yes. But he oh, snagged God. him, so he's going to come see us. Hi, Ted. Hi, Teddy. I know that you wanted to say hi to everybody. I know that you wanted to say hi. Can you say hi to everybody? Hey, hi, guys. I'm wearing my sweater. My sister bought me a sweater. Yes. Back a little bit. She bought me a sweater. Yeah, I have to tell on him. I took him outside the other night, and he was he was wet when he came in. So I took his sweater off him, and underneath his sweater is his harness. And are you gonna look over here where they can actually see you? Maybe we need to come back this way. No, we need to go this way. And. Um, he was wet, so I took his sweater off of him and then took his harness off, rubbed him down good, and was just going to let him sleep without his harness on. And... <laughs> oh, does it feel good? Does it feel... Oh, it does. Yes. I'm getting puppy loves, guys. We need to get back to class, but, you know, there's loving to be done here. Anyway... <laughs> Maybe he left his bones to the left there, yes. Um, so I took his sweater off, I laid it on the bed, and he went over and started nosing at his sweater. He was trying to get the sweater back on. <laughs> he was trying to get it back on. It was so cute. Pushing his nose up under it, trying to get it on. So I put his sweater back on him because that's what he wanted. But it was pretty cute, I gotta say. Pretty cute. 
Of course, I think just about everything he does is pretty cute, even when he's being annoying. Yes, I couldn't believe it. He was pushing his nose under it, trying to figure out how to get it back on. I picked it up, I held it up, and he practically stuck his head in. It was so cute. He said, I like my sweater. It's warm. It's warm, and it was cold outside, and he made me go out there and... Teddy's having to kind of relearn some of his manners since it started getting cold and rainy outside. He's just a little over a year old and he has, for months now, several months, five months or so, he has just been such a good puppy. No accidents, no nothing. But now that it's gotten wet outside, we're having to work on his house manners again because now he thinks he shouldn't have to go out where it's cold and wet. Okay, look at that on the gold. That is just really, really beautiful on mirror. Isn't it gorgeous? Don't mean to blind you there. Isn't that pretty? Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to get one of my European A6 cards out here. <laughs> and we're going to cover our card. does not have a raincoat and, and booties. If he did, maybe he would be more inclined to be willing to go out. He's kind of got daddy and grandpa buffaloed when they take him out. He'll say, up, oh, don't have to go right now, and they'll let him come in. When I take him out, I boot him back off the porch until he does his business. He doesn't get to come in until he does it. But they let him in. Then he comes in here and pees in the shop. Not good. So we have to go around and around because you don't get to pee in mom's studio. Okay. We got our Black Merry Christmas. It's just stunning, this black mirror board on the, on the gold. Man, that's pretty. Okay. Now, I want to show you what I did on the rabbit and tell you why. I wanted my rabbit to be on the background paper, but it was just too busy to have the rabbit sit directly on the, on the background. That's why I put the little black separator there. So I'm going to put a little strip of black mirror board across, and then we're going to cut a little square out of our black mirror board. And we're going to set the rabbit on there so that it separates the colors a little bit. <laughs> what size does he wear? I would say he would wear a medium in things. But <clears throat> he's a jokester, I'll tell you. All right, let's see. So next thing I need to do, let me see what I've got left going here. I still need a long piece of mirror board for that. I need to make sure I keep that. And I think I can use one of these, okay? All right, so I'm going to cut myself a piece of the background paper that has the bunny and the kitten. It's right there on top. The bunny and the kitten and the dog. On this one, I used the blue background, but I think I might go with the red because this has quite a bit of red in it, and I actually think the red might be a better match for it than my blue was, although it did make the topper stand out. Anybody have a thought? 
<laughs> a beanie and an umbrella should round things out nicely. <laughs> Hi, Diane. <laughs> Red, yeah, I thought so too. Okay. Let's cut a little strip of red. I actually cut it fairly wide, so we'll start wide and go narrower if we feel like we want to. Let's go to... Two and a half might be a bit much. Let's go to two and a quarter. We'll try that. That's about what I did last time. And then we'll mount that on some mirror board. It's got about the right margins. Okay, we're going to talk about materials conservation again here. I want to make all this happen out of this one sheet of mirror board. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to I'm going to cut my strips for the two sides first. Then I'm going to use the black square out of the middle. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to... I don't want to cut this all the way across. So I'm going to cut myself some strips that will allow me to be able to choose the part of the pattern I want. Hi, Ted. He's bringing me his toy. If you subject me to being viewed, you should at least play with me, Mother. I'm going to make myself a strip that's an inch and a half wide and another one let's see that's an inch and a half wide it's a half inch so. come on Deborah you can do this it's three quarters I need three quarters an inch and a half wide. Yeah, so I thought I got one wider than the other. Okay, well, we'll just work with that. And I want to have a piece big enough for my bunny. So I'm going to cut a piece that's just big enough to cover the back of my bunny, you know, that will cover on all sides. So I want this to be, I'm going to say three inches, I'm going to start with three inches, by three inches, okay, so I've got this going, might have to take that down just a little bit because that's kind of big, so I'm going to go to two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Okay, good. That's just about the right size. Two and three quarters by two and three quarters gave me just the right amount of coverage there. I'm gonna glue this down. Okay, now I'm going to take these strips I created. I'm going to put them underneath here. So my paper was two and a quarter. I'm going to go two and a half wide on my strip. glue that down <clears throat> I'm going to decide what part of the image I want to use I'll go ahead and cut this off here because I know I And 
Oh, that would be cute. I have another little rabbit on the other side. So I'm going to try and put this one. How long was this? That was two and a half. So I'm going to cut this to two and a half. I'm going to glue that so it has a piece of the picture that I like right in the middle. And instead of running this entire thing underneath, I'm going to paper piece it so that the parts of the image I want to show will show. I've got this and this and this and I've got my bunny in the middle and then I'll trim off the extra. I like that side just like it is. And this side I went over just a little. Okay, see what I'm doing there, guys? In order to conserve my black cardstock, I'm just not running that whole piece through the middle. I'm just paper piecing it so I can so I can conserve my black paper. So I'm going to get my trusty ruler out here so I get these straight. I'm not actually measuring everything. I just want to make sure that these two are relatively even. I'm going to move him a little bit out to the outside. I'm going to move him about there. I glue these down and then I'll trim them I'll trim off the extra. And I'm doing that because I wanted to conserve some of my black card. I wanted to get this card done without using more than my one piece of cardstock on this card because that was my card budget for this card okay <coughs> and I'm just eyeballing this it doesn't have to be a hundred percent I'm just eyeballing it I want the kitten and the bunny to show on this side. <laughs> you can have whichever pictures you like the best showing. I'm going to glue my bunny here. Bring this back just a little. And that's going to be just right, I think. Glue my bunny down. <laughs> yeah, even though Teddy's decided he doesn't want to get his feet wet, to his credit, he hasn't done anything in the house. He just comes out here and does it, which I'm not sure why he thinks out here is okay. But. And that's what we ended up with. With some cute little pictures on either side of our bunny. But he's separated from those pictures by the black, so it's not too... Yeah, probably.
Okay, let's see. Let's go ahead and glue this down and we will have this one done, huh? These take a little longer than the snowmen, don't they? Just a little bit more fussiness to these. More layers and things. The snowmen, most of those pieces because of the luxury cards and the card layers and kind of um, routine size mats went together really, really fast. These a little bit slower. I don't know how we're doing for time. My baby wipe out here. A little bit of glued mop up. paper towel to polish that back up again. To be a little careful when you first put these down about polishing your mirror and stuff because you can create more of a mess by moving your mirror around with your paper towel. <laughs> Sound like the voice of experience it is. <laughs> yep, there, see I just did it on my S. Darn it. Baby wipe again, <laughs> paper towel again. Now you just straighten up there where you're supposed to be, Mr. S. Look at you being a pill. That looks pretty good. Okay, that looks good. I'll put the berries down underneath. Don't these dyes work neat with these? Yeah. True. The smaller, more intricate pieces. Good point. really like these berries. Can you see where these berries would be useful for other things too? I think these would be great sprigs coming out from under stuff and a lot of times when I'm doing nature kinds of things I like to run a sprig out from under something. The holidays I glitter it and other times I might make it green. Wow did I get this messy? And I turned it. Wow. That was really an LC one, guys. Fortunately, it cleans up really nicely with a dry paper towel and a wet wipe. Wow, that was messy. I think that might be the messiest one I've ever done. I don't know what made it special <laughs> that I got so messy, but yeah, clean it up, clean it up good. It's an important step. You can wipe it off with the baby wipe, but it's a really important step that you dry off the foggy film that's left over from the baby wipe, you know, because it kind of spreads that adhesive really thin, and then it leaves kind of a foggy film there where the adhesive was, so important to dry it off and kind of polish it a little bit or you have to remove stuff too. That's pretty good though. I can probably go back in in a little bit after we're done and come in a little bit closer but you can still see what we ended up with. So here's our two cards, our sample and our finished card. So you can see the red and green difference. Okay. 
That was number four. All right. Kitty's going to be a little easier. <laughs> Thankfully, Kitty's a little easier. Okay. On Kitty, I want to use... Oh, let's just use this ruler. I want to use a piece that is three and a half by three and an eighth, which is interesting. Two and three quarters by two and five eighths. Okay, let's get out our pieces for that one. We want, and this one I used the star piece. It's actually on the back of one of these cutouts. <clears throat> and from this, I'm going to cut a Merry Christmas. And I'm going to cut a... It's hard to cut those cute little images on the back. I'm going to start with a three and a quarter by three and a quarter, I think. And I'm going to cut myself. This paper lengthwise, I'm going to give myself on the, we have this big card left to go, and I want to be able to cover this, so I'm going to give myself a four, I'm actually going to give myself a four and a half for that and set this aside, so that I know I have enough for that. And I'm going to cut myself a, let's see, I did a three and a quarter. So I think I want a three and a half inch by three and a half inch square. Maybe a three and a half by three and a half. I may cut these down some more. So we've got this. That actually looks really cool like that. <laughs> I might change my design. And I want the Black Merry Christmas. Now this Mary that I had before <clears throat> shifted in the cutter and I ended up with part of a Mary. I'm going re to retain the Christmas because you can easily cut these words apart. I'll retain the Christmas and use the scrap to recut the Mary. It's really only the M I even needed. But it actually might be worth it to cut a whole one. Use this one. I still have another one coming up for the Merry Christmas. I'm going to cut a whole one. I'll tell you why. Because I want to use, I want to do some shadowing, and it will be easier to shadow this if both are in whole pieces. So I'm going to look to my left and find my dies. <laughs> I'm going to cut myself a Black Merry Christmas out of this. Back. I had a shim here. 
Come on. Let's get going in there. I got the right size plates. I got the right size plates. Sometimes when you're die cutting and your die is right at the very front of your cutting plate, it doesn't want to start nicely. It will start better if you push it back just a little from the opening. I should have my... I have a non-skid mat I can put under this. I just didn't bother to pick it up. But it would have been time saving to do that instead of chasing my machine around. Okay. I got my Merry Christmas here. The other thing that takes some real time with this that we didn't have with the snowman is the die cutting. That takes us a little time. The die cutting and embossing folders. How are we doing for time, Bryce? We're at 421. 421, so. We can surely finish this and one other. I may have you do the three-piece card on your own. We'll take a good look at what I did in case you decide you want to replicate that. But that one would entail putting together another set of die cuts, and that would take time. But we'll take a really good close look at what we, what I did on there in case you decide you want to use that pattern. I also would completely understand if you decided you wanted to do that differently and not use three toppers on one set. It's probably because of the story of the tree that I just couldn't make myself not do that. Because it just made me reminisce. <laughs> About that cat and that dog and that tree. <laughs> Look at that. That's going to be a perfect fit for my Merry Christmas there. Do you think I'll stick a little piece of tape on there to avoid having to recut it if it shifts? Where'd that go? <laughs> Purple tape. Look on your left. I know that's gummy. <laughs> Yeah, it would. It would be good if it wasn't trying to run off. Well, maybe I'm just going to do it. Maybe I'll just do it. Or maybe I'll cheat just a little. Yeah, it's probably going to be a mistake, but that's okay. That's the right sandwich. Don't have it shimmed, but it's only going through lighter weight paper, so we'll see. Why was she looking on the right, they say? Because <laughs> my purple tape wasn't on the left. Okay, take this off. Oh, I kind of got away with that. It may die just a little sticky, but I did get away with doing that. Looks like the kind of thing decision I make in the spur of the moment that causes me to wish I hadn't done it later, but it worked out okay this time. Right, one thing I love to do with lettering is make it look shadowed, and you can very easily do that by layering up two identical die cuts and layer them off just a little bit from one another. That's what I was going for with this one. That's just to kind of create that shadow effect. I actually didn't need these berries. Well, we'll save those for a different day. You can see that this would be nice foliage though, huh? Coming out from under something, those little sprigs berries. Okay, let's hope we got still got one more red to do. Let's get the embossing folder here. Are we going to be short on black? I might be short on black. Okay, play it out. 
bring this one in. There's my red card stock again. Now, I'm going to look at my black supplies. I may, I may not have enough black to cover this card. Let's see what we got left here. No, if I use the big black, I'm not going to have enough for my my tall cards, so I think I'm going to skip the layer in the back and go straight to go straight to oh, I thought I put in plenty of cardstock. You didn't get ripped off though because you, I didn't um, I only charged you for what I calculated and I calculated by, I should have included a little bit more black but that's okay we, we are nothing if not adaptable right guys okay so I'm just gonna put this one down on red we do still have two red features which will make the kitty look nice with the I think it'll be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna cover my card with my embossed, my debossed side actually. I'm not sure I understand if your studio is clean yet, Patrice. What's that mean? Okay, here we go. We got one side, two sides. I'm going to put down my It looks kind of fun. I don't know if I'll do that or not with the layering too, but it does look kind of fun that way. I've got my layering words. Oh. Didn't weed out my E there. Come on. Get out of there. There it goes. Okay. So to layer these up, I'm going to glue one down, then I'm going to glue the other one right over the top. But I'm going to leave just a little bit on kind of to one side and above to get that shadowed Merry Christmas. So I think we'll do that first. Oops, I have another shot I didn't take out there. I also need to weed that S. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to put my Merry Christmas down first. And I think because I made my cardstock just a little bit bigger this time, I'm going to go a little bit higher with this one than I did on my first sample. It's good that I made that square just a little bit bigger since the um, 
since we're not using a black border. I think I'm going to go fairly high with this one. It's probably about the same place I put the other one, actually. A little bit of glue around it. I'm going to clean up. Bad. Not bad at all. You have to be a little bit careful about using a... This wet wipe is fairly dry. But you have to be a little bit careful about a wet wipe on your cardstock because that can lift the color. Still looks good though. Okay, now I'm going to put, I'm going to glue on my Mary. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, oh, Ellen. Bye. <laughs> See you on the replay. Yeah, I have a couple of friends that I craft with that that would make, especially one of them. The other one's learned to trust me a little bit more with uh, some of the design elements. But one, if it's not, uh, I have to fight her all the time about the fact that she wants everything to be precisely um, mirrored from one side to the other. And she wants all the elements to be absolutely straight. And, you know, sometimes it looks way more natural and way better if you intentionally set some of those things off. So we go around and around about that. Now, look how much dimension. Just setting that off just a little bit how much dimension that gives those letters. They kind of look like they stand up a little bit now, don't they? That's true. That's actually a really good idea, Thelma. It would be a great idea to take some black stickers and surround this. It'd be a great idea. Okay, now do I want those off? I really do kind of like them off. Let's cut out our square for our kitty. And our kitty, I'm just going to put him on here and measure it. Our kitty wants, I think we can do two and a half. So I'm going to do a two and a half inch square for the kitty. I don't have any little pieces here I could be using. Don't see any. Where's my kitty? My kitty's good on two and a half inches. Okay, this versus this. You get to vote. Oops, let me hold them up a little further.
I need a vote. Are we going to angle the squares? Or are we going in straight? We got one vote each way. We got two votes each way. We got three for angle, two for straight. Okay. There's a straight, there's an angled. We're still one more angled than straight, so we're angling. <laughs> okay. We're going to do it different. But you'll have two samples you can look at. Choose what you like the best. <laughs> and put the first one on just a little bit angled. The second one on a little more. <laughs> I think it's 4 3, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, the presents are going to be straight up and down. The cat's going to be straight up and down no matter what we do. No matter what we do with the background, the cat's going to be straight up and down. Because he would have a hard time sitting here if we angled that too much. But... Okay. I angle this one. Symmetrical, that's the word that I was looking for. I had to go and couldn't find. My friend wants to make everything symmetrical. And I'm going to use the horizon line to set my kitty straight. You might love it, you might hate it. That's okay. It's this is truly going to be a matter of personal taste. I am going to put one of these little stars up in the corner. Because I think that really broke things up a little bit on an otherwise very symmetrical card on the original. I'd love it when you can take a die and cut the pieces apart and use the pieces. Let's put that up there. I want it up there, up there. Yeah, I think I want it on this side. Okay. We'll see what you think. Like I said, love it or hate it, it's just an example. Do yours the way that brings makes you happy. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Okay, two examples. I like it. I like the kit. I like our revised card a lot. I do think Thelma's idea of running some black stickers around it might be a nice idea. I do like that. Okay, we got one more card we're going to do together, and then we'll talk through the last one because it's a whole other whole other batch to do. We already have a piece of card stuff done for this one. We have plenty of gold. I didn't underestimate the gold. I underestimated the black just a little bit. Okay. Now what do you think of this one, guys? Here's our choices. Here's the blue side.
Here's the red side. Which side do you want this time? Red? Red? <laughs> okay, Patrice. See you later, friend. Blue. Hard choice. Red. Blue. Purple. <laughs> blue makes puppy stand out more. Blue, blue, blue. I see more blues. We're going with blue. And we used the red before, so that's probably good. Now, if we wanted to conserve paper, we could cut this one if we wanted to. Or we could just cover our card. I think in the interest of time, I'm just going to cover my card. But we could absolutely, in fact, no, it's not quite big enough. It's almost big enough, though. Um, and I could save some material if I wanted to cut this down a little bit. But. All right, let's see. We need to cover our card first. We're going to need two pieces of A6 Mary for that. We're going to get our other A6 card, our last A6 card out. He wanted to cut, huh? <laughs> Okay, I think we had more votes for blue, so I think we're going to do this one blue. But either one's going to look good. That's the that's the nice thing is either one of them's going to look good. Because this little dog is super cute. Super cute. Cover it with mirror board. She's a hoot, Patrice. She's funny. <laughs> I like her. Sassy. She's sassy. Sassy's good. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely could do that, Andrea. You absolutely could cut that piece down the center and you guys want me it sounds like you want me to do that i got a couple of you asking for that so we'll do it we'll do it i'm going to cut this a little narrower because that's just like overwhelmingly big so let's cut this down a little i think we'll cut this to well, let's look at two and a quarter and see what we get that's about what i used last time Okay. All right. So we were at five and seven, or our card is five and seven eighths. We're currently at six. We're going to go to a little over five and five eighths. We're going to cut this dude in half because that's what my crew wants, and what you want, you get. Three and a half. So I'm going to do two strips that are one and three quarters wide. It really isn't any more trouble to do it this way, truly. And it does save paper. <laughs> you have a lot of paper left from this kit. A lot, a lot. Yep. I do, I actually use this technique quite a bit on my Christmas cards when I'm trying to conserve borders and that kind of stuff. I'll clip the border and only put in what shows. It is true. Oops. Guess I better make sure my card fold is on the right side though. Almost made the classic card maker error there. Put it all on upside down. You ever done that? Oh, I've done that so many times. Okay. Alrighty. We got that. We're going to have this. Oh, 
side, are you? Yeah, that's just right for you. We're going to cut this one was one and three quarters. No, is that right? No, that was two and a quarter. I want this to be two and a half. We'll glue this down to this. <laughs> it really didn't take any extra time, truly, to do that, to cut that down. So I'm glad you convinced me to do it. This whole piece to be shorter. So I want this to be the same width as my blue papers, which are five and five eighths. I trim both sides because they're kind of rough edge on here. And off. Come over here. And the other side off, a little over five and five eighths. Like this right here looks good. Looks good, looks good. Tiny bit of glue showing. Get rid of that. Okay. I'll put this here. Oh. All this die cutting takes a lot of extra time, but it sure adds to your versatility to be able to add some dies. You guys are going to have so much of this pet paper left. You're really going to have fun with what you have left. Okay, I'm going to put my dog up on some foam squares. Then we are going to cut some little berries to go underneath. I have two sprigs here already. You know, I was thinking it would be fun with these berries, kind of layer these to begin to make it look like a Christmas tree standing behind him. I was looking at this and thinking that would have been fun to do that, to make them, I'm going to try it this time, to make them kind of look like it's arching up like he's sitting in front of the tree. What kind of foam squares do you use or recommend? Um, two kinds. I have two kinds I sell in the store. There's Hunky Dory, which I think are fabulous. Um, I for my typical foam squares are five um, are two by twos. Excuse me, that's not what I'm trying to say. Five. I use five by five by twos for just about everything. Although we have the bigger ones, if you don't want to have to pick all the little pieces, we have these foam squares clear up to like 38 millimeters. So big. Um, but we have the Hunky Dory in lots of sizes in both one and two millimeters. But then there's also one out there that we have discovered that's equally good but costs less. Um, we also use foam squares by Hobby Journal. And in Hobby Journal, we have one millimeter, one and a half, two, and three millimeter foam squares. Depending on what project you're using, Cindy, and which, you know, how much height you want out of it. There's lots of different ones that can be, you know, lots of different depths that can be used. A lot of times when I don't have a lot of pieces, I like to use the, the bigger ones. Let me get a couple more of these little black pieces cut. And what I did with these 
is I used, uh, out of these extra pieces, I used the berries on this card and then I saved the stars for the long card where I put them in the corners. So just FYI, I used all the pieces. I just used them on different cards. So I'm going to get a couple more berries cut here out of this piece. I don't need the Merry Christmas, actually. I just need the berries. I'll take that off. We'll grab the tape back off it. Let's see. Seems to have misplaced my purple tape. It's here on the table somewhere. As soon as I don't need it, it will surface. Okay, cutting die, cutting plate. Cutting plate. It's nice to have you with us, Cindy. Okay. We're just about done here, guys. And then we'll have some show and tell and we'll be finished up. Our next class, as you guys know, is our advent calendar that's going to be great fun to do and they just turn out so darn cute i'm going to cut one more star here because i want one more piece than i used last time because i'm going to try and make this look like a christmas tree in the background just a little bit like a tree just kind of resemble one why not so we will get this on here. Run it one more time. We're just about ready for show and tell, honey. Okay. There we go. Okay, now I think we have enough pieces. Let's see if we can layer these in such a way that we kind of make what looks like it could be a Christmas tree behind him. Did you answer Cindy's question about foam squares? I did. Okay. Yes, I did. Okay. There we go. Oh, cute, cute, cute. It's actually going to work out really well, guys. I'll show you here in a second, I think. This is going to be cute. I kind of thought of that when I did this one, but then it didn't look quite like I wanted, but I was thinking about it, and I thought what I need is more branches, because this time it's going to look more like a more like a Christmas tree, don't you think? Like he's kind of framed by the Christmas tree. <laughs> I could go on up if I wanted to, but then I'd run into my Merry Christmas up there. So I have my Christmas down here. I have my... Mary, Mary R. agrees with you. Betty gave you a thumbs up, and Brenda says, I like that. <laughs> Just got one extra berry from what we used before. I wish I hadn't miscut that Mary. I'd be done with my die cutting. 
but I miscut that Mary, so I'm going to cut it one more time. See, I kind of nipped the top off my M. That's not good. We don't want that. Hello. I just dropped it in there. I was going to say I could have just cut the M. But I didn't think of it in time, and it's buried in my trash now. So, where's my Merry Christmas go to? There it is. Do one more Merry Christmas here, and we will be all set and ready. Now, I don't really care what happens with the Christmas, because that's not what I'm going after. So, I'm just going to let that hang off of there. And go for it. Put a star in its place. <laughs> that would have been a possibility. <laughs> okay. There we go. Got the last one. We will talk through in detail what we did on the other one, guys. Oh, um, Betty McSorley, are you still out there? Oh, yes, there you are. Um, you had asked me about paper dynamics, and I went out and took a look. They actually have some really cute stuff. I, I didn't see any indication on their website that they do trade accounts. Um, they may just be doing Create and Craft. I don't know for sure. But I one of the things that I saw there on their website under the... Um, the purple papers, what were they called? Um, oh, what's that collection called? You, I, I looked at it. Um, my brain goes clunk and stops. Um, la, was it lavender? No. That, um, the, anyway, um, one of the things I saw on that collection that might be the thing that's messing you up was pyramid papers, where they have, um, where they have the same picture repeated over and over, but they it's a partial image and it keeps getting smaller as they replicate it. I don't know if you've used those before, but the idea behind Pyramid is that they are ooh, they're wanting you to, I, I don't know if they're die cut or cut out, but they want you to um, cut out or die cut, punch out the images, and then you stack those up with foam squares, offsetting them each time, so that um, in some pyramids it, it actually the, the, um, angles and turns, kind of like what we did with our last image. In other ones, it is it just gets smaller and smaller as you go towards the middle, so you just match the picture. Was the other Betty? That's called Lavender Moments. Lavender Moments, that's it. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking it was Betty McSorley that asked. Yeah, okay. Lavender Moments, yes. So the I think that might be what was giving you trouble. I'm not sure. But maybe that would be the thing. I also noticed they had a lot of a fair number of square cards. And um you could either do those in squares, as they have done, although I know that I think it might have been you that said you prefer to do the rectangles because they cost more to, to mail the squares. Think about using some... Re Thank you, Cindy, for dropping in. Um, we'll see you on the rerun. Um, you can use some ribbon. Um, some of those, uh, you can use a die over there. 
you can use some, you know, some spacers to kind of put your image either in the center and do treatments down both sides, or you could um, try putting, you know, like larger die cuts, panels, ribbon, and things down the side beside your beside your square images. So I hope that helps a little. I did go look and that's what I saw. If you have any other specific questions, I'd be happy to answer you. But I went to let you know I did follow through on what I said I'd do and I did go out and look at them. And I asked them about trade accounts. We'll see if they have one. They did have some pretty stuff, but Okay, so we got our branches in place for our tree. And I do think that looks a little bit like a tree now, doesn't it, honey? Mm -hmm. Kind of sticking out behind the dog. And we will... Um, the, if they're six by six squares, you might be able to cut those images down. Just look for some of the primary elements and... You might be able to make those a little smaller too. So just a few ideas for you. Some of the European designs, they make their images so big because they do a lot of eight by eight cards and really large ones that are bigger than we tend to do here. So it can make designing with those kits just a little challenging. I'm putting down my Merry Christmas guys up above and to the left and lower to the right. And I think our little doggy card is going to be done. I really like that done as a Christmas tree instead of just the berries sticking out. I really like that. So, I'm going to show you our original and our revised. Here's our revised. Here's our original. I like the revised a lot better. But that's just my opinion. You might like the other one. Okay. There you go. So if Crafter's Companion had them too, then maybe they would, uh, maybe they do have trade accounts because that would be two different companies they're working with. Okie dokie. Are you guys ready to see some show and tell? Change gears here and see some show and tell? Oh, that, we got to do your, we got to talk through this one first. Okay, so I gave you in the kit an extra big card. And this is actually slightly oversized. This is what's called a tall, but not only is it taller than our typical card, it is also slightly wider than our typical card. So a DL card is typically four and an eighth. This is like four and three eighths wide. And it is like eight and a little over. Well, let's see, I don't have a full sheet here now. Maybe I do. Yeah, if you look at this page that's actually a true A4, it's actually a little over the size of an A4 sheet. So these quote-unquote tall cards, they can be a little bit more challenging. Now, I'll tell you the truth, often I just cut them down and make them 4 by 8 because they're easier to use. But in this case where i'm putting all these elements on one card i really needed a lot of crafting surface and i didn't want to go to a bigger card so what i opted to do instead was use this tall card um i kept one of the reasons why we kept these two long ones though is that the mirror board i cut these in half early on 
because this mirror board or this card is too long to go crosswise on a piece of mirror board. So that makes sense and cover it just like I just showed you. It's wider. This card is wider than the mirror board going the other way. So you're going to use these two half sheets that we had to do your card covering. You're going to layer these all up normally. And then the only other trick here is <clears throat> I thought that when we got all three of these in here, that this was, it was too busy to have our big die cuts up here. So because there's a lot going on with this card, I used the Merry Christmas sticker, which was slightly smaller than our die cut image. I used my berries down here and I actually raised the center one just a little. So I've got lower, higher, lower, but I did have to nip the edges just a little bit. See that? I actually clipped them just a little bit. Now, um, you could have them go out as far as the black mirror board if you wanted to. I just kept them all on the gold. Um, and then I overlapped my frames to make everything fit. So I think you'd be okay with that. Just lay it all out before you start gluing anything down and you're going to be fine. And let's get a good long look at this so that you can come back and reference it if you want to. And the little stars I cut off of the branches just now, I saved those and that, that became my corners. Okie dokie. All right, let's do show and tell because I'm anxious to show you what I just did. And you're probably getting anxious to get out of here because we've been at this a long time today. So let's get this done and wrap it up. Get my mess out of the way here so I actually have a somewhat clean surface to show you our new things on. Let's slide things out of the way. Okay, we are going to take a look first at our advent box. Just to remind you, this is coming up on Thursday. If there weren't any in the store when you went to look, there's a few more now. Um, check, check again, Diane. I added some more. I added some more. And if they're gone again, I will still put some more in because I had enough to make um, more boxes if necessary. So if you're if it was gone go back and try again. It said it's out right now. Um, it, let me check it when I do my newsletter tonight. I think I can put some more in for you. So I will, um, I'll look at that. I think I have listed a total of 12 and I could make a total of 15 boxes. I will um, Katie and Diane, I will send you links when I do the, when I do the newsletter, if you want. Okay. Or I'll send you links when I put it up, maybe even a private link, or I can just do the orders for you. Do you want me to process an order for you and then call you for a payment? Yeah. You want me to do that? I will do that. I will, I will process your orders and call you for a payment. So we know for sure you get one. Anybody want to lay claim to the third one? because I know I can put up one more. I'll just list it if, if nobody claims it. Because this is the cutest thing. It's noisy when I pull these boxes in and out. But it says something about how, and this is um, Katie Easley, right, Katie? And Diane McIntyre. I just need to make sure I'm, I'm giving them to the right people. <laughs> Katie Easley, right? Okay, good. All right, just making sure. All right, so we got this coming up next Thursday. Sounds like I don't need to do a whole lot more promotion if we're going to be totally sold out soon. So I'm not going to spend a lot more time on it other than to say it's going to be really, really fun. And we're going to have a good time doing it. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited about this one. I only had one more slot left for a Christmas project. And Brittany showed me this kit and I abandoned all other plans. 
because I had to do this because it was beautiful and I had not seen it before and I didn't know what was coming and it was gorgeous. Now normally I'd have the full papers here to show you. I did not run down to get another set before class started today. I apologize for that. But this is one small section of this kit. From one small section, I made 11 cards. 11 cards. Here they are. First, we've got what could be back a little bit. spiced cider or mulled wine, whichever you prefer. <laughs> This one. Tip these up a little bit more. Look at this stocking. Like it has inserts too. Oh yeah. They do have insert papers too. Of course we made more than they anticipated so they're not all inserted. But it comes with inserts. Need this one. This is a ribbon we haven't tried yet, and I just tried it for the first time last night. It's wonderful woven gold ribbon. It's even prettier in person. We've got a blue Christmas tree. Now I will tell you that I used some jewel dazzles on the tree. The jewel dazzles will not be included in your kit, but I've given you so many of these over the summer that I'm almost certain most of you have silver and red jewel dazzles. So I kept the cost a little bit down and didn't send those. Look at this one. Oh, what are jewel dazzles? Well, we can get you some, Diana. If you want me to include a sheet when I do your your box order, I can. Jewel dazzles are stickers that are available in small, medium, and large sizes on a sheet. I think the largest is probably about, I'm going to say 10 to 12 millimeters. Um, and the... Um, the smallest one is about, I'm going to say, three millimeters. So there's three sizes, probably a three, a seven, and a 10 to 12. And they are holographic stickers in just little tiny circles. And that's what you see prisming in the tree. See how that's catching the light? I can't stand myself. When I see a Christmas tree, I have to decorate it. It just must be done. <laughs> least on cards <laughs> I have to put I have to put decorations on it so we got two different Christmas trees look at this one Marianne wants to know if you sell the We Are Memory Keeper um, we'll I actually sell. have we're sold out Mary R but we will have them again probably in a week because I ordered them I ordered them last week um, yes Patrice they do come in purple they come in purple, teal, blue, red, silver, gold. Black. There actually are some black ones, although they're not holographic. Uh, green, pink. They're in lots of colors. So, yes. So we got this one. We got this one. That ribbon's cool. So uh, the ribbon, of course, will be included in your kit if you get your kit from us, as will the card blanks. You'll get 10. Is it 10? Yeah, you'll get, no, you'll get, um, uh, let's see, it's 11 cards. You get eight of the A6s, two um, DLs, four by eight cards, 
and you get a 5x7. All of those will be in 300 GSM cards. Oh, you didn't miss it. You didn't miss it yet, Annette. It just went up. <laughs> Purple is all that matters. I, you are my you you are one of my soulmates, as is Annette, because purple is my color. This one right here, I made all from scraps. Wait till you see how I did this one. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? It's all scraps, <laughs> and this is one of my favorites. Look at this one. This is from part. Just a small part of this kit. Woohoo! Let's see what the rest of the kit looks like. This was just one set of toppers. In addition to the toppers, you get a second set of toppers that's gnomes. I really wanted to do these too, but there's just a limit to how many things we can do in a class. And I think my cameraman would go on strike if I tried to do all of these carts. But I love the gnomes. The gnomes are too, too cute. In fact, I have to show these to my daughter. She might want to make these up for one of her friends who collects gnomes. We've got insert papers in here. These are not going to be in any particular order. There's my inserts. Two, three, four inserts. We have, uh, in addition to what I already used, we have the following double-sided papers. We have this one, which matches the gnome print. We have this one, which I started using on the other kit. We have this one, I love this polka dot. Love it. We have these toppers. These are not in any particular order. I apologize for the disarray, but you know, you can sometimes you get what you get here. <laughs> there's one set of toppers. So clearly there's four cards right there. Here's a fifth card with a beautiful piece of foiled cardstock. Look at that. Isn't he adorable? Oh my gosh. And she is adorable also. So we've got a sixth card there. And look, we have five more toppers on here. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It looks like the second set should make roughly eleven cards also. So you had the papers, or the, you had the... the um, die cut and foiled toppers. You have the cardstock. You have the inserts. You have the double sided papers. But oh no, there's more. <laughs> I feel like a late night okay. infomercial guy. But wait, there's more. <laughs> you get the magazine with all the ideas. And there are some terrific ideas in here. Really, really good ideas. If I'd have had more time, we would have made a couple more gifts out of this magazine because the magazine has great, great ideas. Really, really beautiful. Beautiful ideas for these. And it's, I don't know how many pages. It's just chock full of ideas for this kit. 66 page magazine. You get an embossing folder that actually has two patterns on it. You can use them together or you can use them separately. After I finished my cards the other night, Margie wasn't quite done with her project, so I started just playing with it on mirror board. Look at this. You can layer up, you can, you can, um, you can um, emboss this and then <laughs> do multiple copies and I'll call in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm not going to do a two for one, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you guys are too funny. But you can layer these up, and they're just beautiful. Imagine that. Yeah, I mean, I did this in mirror board, but you could do this in different colors and layer these up, make beautiful poinsettias. 
Oh my gosh, this is a beautiful embossing folder. I am thrilled to have it in my collection. In addition, you also get a Seasons Greetings, a nice, generous size Seasons Greetings die. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are too funny. And you get a set of stamps. And this stamp right here, it's you can't tell what it is hardly, but I'm telling you guys, it is adorable. It's three gnomes standing on each other's shoulders. And in the idea book, they've stacked that as high as two and even three. They made one really super sized card, and they actually stacked this up three times. But they're adorable standing on each other's shoulders. There's our poinsettia. And then you get Gnome for Christmas, G-N-O-M-E. And you get Christmas wishes. You get the stocking, a poinsettia that's separate to layer on your... Um, you actually get two more poinsettia pieces to layer on this stamp. It's an unbelievably rich kit. So you get everything I have shown you in our version of the, it's actually Hunky Dory issue volume 12. Ours is $27.95, I believe is what I listed it for. And the magazine is supposed to retail. I, I know sometimes you find them for less, but the magazine is supposed to retail for $19.99. So you get the magazine, you get the dies, you get the stamps, you get the embossing folder, you get two full kits, and then in my kit you get the cards, you get the envelopes, you get the ribbons, you get a set of pearls, you get... I think that's it. <laughs> you get a lot. <laughs> you get a lot. But is that beautiful or what? I could not believe it when I saw it and I said... I'm doing it. That's mine. That's mine. Don't take that out of this room, Brittany. I'm doing it. It's mine. Right now, I only have it listed for um, the kit. I do not have the magazine listed separately at this point because I wanted to have enough of them for the kits first. If we, you know, when we're done with that, then I'll list any magazines that are left. This is um, next Saturday. <laughs> making up for lost time isn't that something though i'm so excited and this will represent our last class of november believe it or not because we then have thanks uh, well we, uh, the last week we have thanksgiving on thursday and then we have our party on saturday so i will see you but we won't have a class that day you're asking when's the advent calendar class when is the Advent calendar class? Is this Thursday at 4 o'clock Pacific time. So, wow. <laughs> Stupid video just said, get organized. You have to stop buying. What BS? <laughs> Yeah, it's all in one kit. It is organized. Exactly. <laughs> I love you, Patrice. You're so funny. I thought you signed out a while ago. <laughs> My hubby might have to unretire. <laughs> you guys are too funny. Well, I think it's time to ask if there's any questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom. If not, I will be placing orders for Katie and for Diane. And I will, if anybody wants to lay claim to that third box, this is your final opportunity to lay claim if you didn't get one. And we will, um, thank you. Oh, and by the way, please, if you're watching and you're liking this and you think it's valuable, please give me a thumbs up. It makes me feel good. I like it. And that's probably just, it's, it's just as true that side of things as that it helps on our YouTube ratings, which it does. But it just makes me feel good. <laughs> that's just as important. So thank you very much for that. And um, I'm going to say, 
I'm <laughs> I'm gonna say goodnight, Gracie. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. <laughs>